Well, we're back up on the Ducart's farm. The snow is melting now so that I can access uh, most of the farm now. Before we had a lot of snow cover and just couldn't get to about three quarters of the farm. So kind of had to wait for that snow to melt out. And um, we definitely got some open ground now. We can, we can see a lot more of the farm and do a lot more of the planning of tree stand locations, potential food plots, ponds, hinge cutting. It's an exciting process. The Ducart's are along for the ride and should be a good day. So really the foundation of this whole property transformation is the hinge cutting aspect. Andy Orr came up, gave us some really good ideas and, and said, you know, if we can lay down this hinge cutting year one, it's gonna completely change the way this property lays out and then we can kind of build our plan based on that. So he came up year one, did a lot of hinge cutting in some of the core areas, some of those bedding areas that we just don't penetrate as humans and really just set up the foundation of this whole plan and the whole transformation of our new property. One of the first things we wanted to do to the property once we got it was do some hinge cutting. And hinge cutting, you know, can be looked at in multiple ways of what it can do and what can it achieve for your property. The scary part of it is, is when you do it, there's no turning back. So take your time, do it right, and figure out what's gonna be best for the property. Don't overdo it, you can always add, but really figure out the exact location where it's gonna benefit you from a hunting perspective and from just the use of the land layout. Hinge cutting is you're cutting a tree, part of it stays attached so that the juices and the life of the tree can continue even though it's laying on the ground. And what you're doing there is you're putting food on the ground. Now you could consider it a somewhat cover as well, depending upon how you do it but really the big and the best feature is the nutrition. So getting the nutrition, adding a visual of bed and putting it in a position where we want the core of the property to be where the humans don't go into, that's really what the hinge cutting is all about. Well, what we're cutting in here is mostly food and some bedding cover in all this Chinese elm in here, hackberry, uh, there's a lot of white oak. Most of these trees we're putting down, you know, you, we're looking at the lean of them, trying to understand which way will they fall, can we put it down. The trees that are completely, you know, straight, a lot of times we may not mess with them, but the, the stuff that we can tell which way it'll fall, you know, we're just trying to create nice bedding through here on the crowns of these hills for mature bucks, and then on the flatter areas more for does and younger bucks. Any deer will use those. There's a lot of great fawning cover back there too, it's real heavy, you know, those, those little fawns can run around, so that's what we're doing in here today is trying to create as much of that as we can in this area to feed this food plot that's 50, 60 yards away. You know. This will all be, you know, north winds, uh, northeast will be real good. I think you can probably slide on northwest, we'll have to see. It just depends on the lay of the land, but it's north winds. You know, you'll come up the southern side of the property and come with the wind in your face right into that tree stand. It'd be a great location. <laughs> So a lot of people, when they think of the term hinge cutting, they relate it to bedding cover, side cover, place that just gives deer more of a sanctuary to lay down during the day and just have their own space. There are a lot of benefits outside of that though that come into the nutritional aspect. A lot of food is put on the ground. You have those stump sprouts, you have regrowth on the tops of the trees that are now down on the floor. You're bringing a lot of sunlight into the forest floor for regeneration of other plants and species too. So the nutritional side is equally, if not more important, than that bedding and side cover aspect. Now the best time of year to hinge cut is when the trees are kind of in their dormant phase. So in winter or spring, once the spring kicks in and it starts getting warm and the trees start budding and actually leaving, if they start leaving, then you're running into kind of a late time. So early spring to even into mid winter, if you can access it, I guess wouldn't hurt for hinge cutting. One thing that really stood out to me during this hinge cutting project was actually going out there and physically seeing how it worked. I'd never been a part of a project like this before. We just had some small core areas we wanted to attack and just actually physically being out there, you actually just saw how grand of a change just these little areas that we attacked were. 
Well, after assessing the entire property, we got Cedar Springs and then we got Oak Roost. Cedar Springs, we focused the hinge cutting on that right away because it had the diversity already on that piece of property. And so we kind of knew what the elements were that were good and what the elements were that were missing. So it was easier to put a plan together on that. Now we went over to the Oak Roost side and it's pretty much all solid timber and there's some really old oak growth in there and some different things going on. And to be honest with you, we were very hesitant to make any changes on that after doing some studying and listening to different people and experts. And what we realized is the bucks need a core area of their own and they don't like to mix with the does and the fawns. And because of the diversity of the Cedar Springs, it was more apt to be the does and the fawns and you know um, having their babies over there and the diversity of the property was going to be a good place for that. And so it's a pretty special property and we don't want to mess it up. So there are two main spots that Andy came in and really worked on the hinge cutting aspect. One of them was a 10 acre section over to the far east of the property. This section here already had four wheeler trails throughout the timber. It already kind of pushed deer in certain ways and forced them to bed in areas that we didn't necessarily want them to bed in. So we flipped that whole strategy, took out a lot of those trails actually. We're gonna put in different trail systems, different movement patterns, and we just tweaked the whole way that this property laid out on the east side to flow with the management plan as a whole on the property. Now the main valley or the main core of the Cedar Springs property that Andy Hinch cut last year is quite a bit different from that east section which was a mature timber. This whole valley has a lot of different, you know, south facing slopes. We got north, west, I mean we got every direction. So sun can hit certain areas, we got cool weather spots from the bed, warm weather spots from the bed, just a lot of diversity and it's more of an immature timber. And in this center valley we took down a lot of trees so there's a lot of food on the ground and a lot of bedding for all different weather wind scenarios for the deer. This is a sanctuary, this is an area we don't go in the entire season. We're maybe going to shed hunt it in the spring, check things out, see if we have to improve it in the spring but other than that we stay completely out and we run our cellular cameras around the outside so we can see what's coming and going from what we call the big sanctuary on the Cedar Spring side. This place in particular is a very good sanctuary because it's so far from all borders, so there's not a lot of pressure, not a lot of people putting their human odor in there, um, and it's just hard to access, very steep, big deep draw. It's just an area that deer feel really comfortable now that we've improved it, it's hard to penetrate deep into that core. So at the same time that we're putting all this food on the ground, we're also trying to think in terms of bedding at the same time, and then you're also thinking about, you know, what do we want the deer to do as far as a movement pattern, and what do we want the, the deer not to do as far as a movement pattern. We don't want them to come around behind them on a downwind side, trying to visualize and conceptualize the tree stand location just up here about 60 yards on north winds. What are these deer going to do? How are they going to react and come out of this bedding to get to that stand? And that's why we're attempting to block this road. We're cutting these trees lower so the deer can't really go under them and they can't go over them and that's what this is all about. That's why you see us cutting these trees lower. Well as we spoke about trying to use these trees as we go along, think of everything you can do with these trees as we're doing it and this particular spot again we're creating a barricade so the deer don't approach around behind the tree stand that's up here. We have a tree stand and a food plot. Nice pond situation just up here about 50-60 yards and we're making this barricade to block a road that led around right behind the tree stand just so that no deer can walk through this at all. About a squirrel is about the only thing that's going to walk through that now. Hinge cutting in general can actually be very dangerous, so you want somebody that has a lot of experience like Andy or in this case. And as you notice when you're watching footage of Andy cut, there's different heights that he cuts these trees. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Some of them have to do with how he needs to drop a certain tree and do another tree which are all kind of prepped to, to fall at the same time. Side cover or screening is a reason you might cut a little bit higher, let some deer pass under those trees as well. 
and then the lower cuts would be more of a barricade type cut or a food source that's lower to the ground. So if you cut a tree lower, you have those stump sprouts that are more easily accessible to deer so they can nibble on all those buds and leaves and it provides a food source right there at the base of the tree. Some tree types hinge really well for Andy. The elm trees, box elders, some of the smaller red oaks, black oaks, and then there were some larger trees that didn't cut so well, but at least he was able to you know, put them on the ground, remove that canopy, bring in the sunlight, so your poplars and maybe some of your bigger oaks, things like that. So even though not all of these trees are gonna survive through a hinge cut, they all have different densities, hardwoods and softwoods. Even if you can get those trees on the ground, they're gonna serve an important purpose for the overall wildlife and health standpoint of all the species on the land. You know, once we did the hinge cut, you know, you never really know what kind of effect it's gonna have, but throughout the hunting season, we didn't really hunt it, but you could kinda see that they were using it the way that we had planned it out. Then once winter hit, we actually went into the property in a more invasive manner, got close to the hinge cut, and did some filming, and it was kind of, <laughs> to be honest with you, it was mind-blowing how well and how effective it worked. I mean, it did exactly what we were expecting, and now we can plan what to do next. So we got that core piece done with the hinge cutting, and it worked, and it worked very effectively, and now we can just work off of that first phase. It's been almost one full year since we hinge cut this property, and you can tell the difference it's made. A lot of deer piling out of those hinge cuts. You can tell the tracks are heavy. It's made a big impact so far. We can't wait for the snow to melt here. We're gonna get in there, check it out, see how many of them hinge cut trees survived. And this time of the year, we have two feet of snow on the ground. So if you think about it, some of those hinge cuts being low, some being high, you know, that creates even more food as the snow depths get higher and higher. Those deer can now reach those higher cut hinge cuts and those buds on the stump sprouts and on the trees. So throughout the winter, there's just layers of food inside that area and it can be a great spot since deer feed twice a day. They're in there during daylight. It's a great spot to go in and shed hunt. So after doing the first big change to the property with the hinge cutting, it, it was really fulfilling to see what, what we really achieved there. And going into this year, it, you know, we're really excited now that the season's over to go in there and do some shed hunting, poke around and, you know, see what's going on. Wait for this spring, maybe talk about changes in the oak roost side, but even more exciting is get out there and do a little turkey hunting and, uh, you know, find some sheds and really enjoy the property. We're really excited to get back into the hinge cut. We've kind of just stayed around the outside, the outskirts of the property, kind of looking in, keeping our scent out this entire season, this entire winter, and just letting the deer have that sanctuary. So when the snow melts here in the next couple weeks, next month, we're gonna get in there. It'll be like a kid on Christmas day, trying to pick up sheds, looking for little presents all over the woods.